Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to start to look at first derivatives and what that tells us about the graph of our function. So we know the definition of a function increasing is that when we have an x1 that is less than x2, that implies that the y value f of x1 will also be less than the y value for x2. Or more simply, as we move from left to right, the y values are going up or increasing. We can also see this happen based upon derivative values or tangent line slopes. So if we look over here at these two examples, both of these are increasing functions because as we move from left to right, our y values are going in the up direction. And we can see that no matter where we draw a tangent line, it would have a slope that would be positive or greater than zero. So a first derivative slope f prime of x greater than zero is going to indicate an increasing function. The opposite of that implies decreasing. So we know that a function is decreasing whenever when x1 less than x2 implies that the y value f of x1 will be greater than the y value f of x2. Or as we move from left to right, the y values should be coming down or decreasing. So we can see two pictures here that show us decreasing functions. And no matter where we were to create a tangent line along that interval, we would see that the slope of that tangent line was negative, or the first derivative f prime of x value is less than zero. So based upon the first derivative, we can tell if the function is increasing or decreasing on any given interval. So let's look at determining whether the function is increasing or decreasing on a given interval. We're actually going to start by finding out the places where the function has a critical point because it turns out that critical points are going to be potential places where our graph changes behavior, changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa. So critical points are places where our first derivative is zero or undefined. So let's start by finding our first derivative. Here that would be three times one third is one x squared minus two x minus three. Because our first derivative here is a polynomial, it's not going to be undefined, but let's figure out where it is zero. This one's gonna factor nicely for us into x minus three and x plus one. Setting those separately equal to zero, we find that we have two critical points, one at x equals three and one at x equals negative one. So our original derivative has a domain of all real numbers. So if we imagine the entire number line from negative infinity to infinity, these two critical points of three and negative one if placed on our number line, sort of break our domain into three separate intervals. We have below negative one, between negative one and three, and above three. And it turns out that based on the sign of the first derivative, we can figure out in each of those intervals the behavior of our function. So how do we figure out what's going on? Well, we can plug in any value that is in that interval to the first derivative and figure out if our first derivative is positive or negative there. And it doesn't matter what value you take. So taking a value that is less than negative one, really pick any value, let's say uh, negative three. If I were to evaluate f prime of negative three, I would then take negative three minus three times negative three plus one. Now I'm not really concerned with the value here, I'm only concerned with the sign. So negative three minus three, I know that's gonna be a negative value times negative three plus one, that's also gonna be a negative value. And overall, negative times negative makes a positive. So in the interval below negative one, we have our first derivative is positive. Now we wanna repeat that for each interval here. So taking a value between negative one and three, how about zero? Think zero minus three times zero plus one. 
Again, I'm not interested in the value, I'm only interested in the signs. So zero minus three is gonna be negative, and zero plus one is gonna be positive. Negative times positive is overall negative. So we have negative here. Finally, take the interval above three, pick any value, let's say mm, seven. Really, any value above three, doesn't matter. Seven minus three times seven plus one, that's gonna be a positive value times a positive value, and overall, positive times positive is positive. Okay, awesome. Now that we have that information, we wanna kinda of synthesize it and write down what we know. So we're trying to determine where F is increasing, and we know that it will be increasing whenever our first derivative is positive. So I can see two places where that is happening. So I can say F is increasing on, I'm gonna write my intervals here, from negative infinity to negative one, and I can either use the union symbol or the word and. The other interval would be from three to infinity. We know that F will be decreasing on any interval where the first derivative is negative. I can see one interval where that is occurring between negative one and three. So writing that as an interval, I have that f is decreasing on negative one to three. So now we can know on any given interval what is happening with the graph in terms of where is it increasing whenever f prime is positive and where is it decreasing whenever f prime is negative. Adding to that information, the first derivative test allows us to use this knowledge about increasing, decreasing, and critical points to find local or relative extrema. So suppose we have a function that is continuous over an interval that contains a critical point. Then if f prime changes sign around that critical point, and it does so from positive to negative, then Visually, if we go from increasing to decreasing, we can see that creates the top of a hill, and so that creates a relative maximum. If it does the opposite, if f prime changes sign around that critical point from negative to positive, then f of c creates a relative minimum. If it goes from decreasing negative slope to positive increasing slope, then we get a relative minimum or the bottom of a valley. If, however, f prime has the same sign on both sides of your critical point, i.e. positive to positive like we see here, or negative to negative, it doesn't matter, then that critical point does not give us any relative extrema. All right, so back to that example we were just working with. We had our derivative x minus three times x plus one, we tested values around, we found that we were increasing from negative infinity to negative one, we were decreasing from negative one to three, and then increasing again from three to infinity. So at these critical points, which are candidates for minimums or maximums, we can look at how is the behavior changing around that point? Well here, at negative one, on the left-hand side, I go from positive increasing to negative decreasing. So I'm going from positive slopes to negative slopes or increasing to decreasing. So visually I can see that creates a local max. And the way that we would write that out is since f prime at negative one equals zero, and f prime goes from positive to negative around x equals negative one. f has a local, or you might use the term relative, max at x equals negative one. 
Now the opposite is gonna be true here at three. We're gonna see that since we go from negative sloping tangent lines or decreasing behavior to positive sloping tangent lines or increasing behavior, as we pass through that three, we hit zero, so we go from negative to zero to positive, that creates a local or relative minimum. So the statement looks pretty similar here. Since f prime of three is equal to zero, and f prime goes from, now this one's gonna be opposite, negative to positive around x equals three, f has a local minimum at x equals three. All right, that does it for this video on first derivatives and graphs. Catch us in the next one. We'll do another example with a different function looking at where is it increasing and decreasing and where are the relative extrema. Until then, we'll catch you next time.